Christmas, where a bunch of us go to Harper's Ferry for the evening. Uh, the, if you want to go with the church or all go together, you need to be here at 5 p.m. sharp. Uh, we'll be going to Harper's Ferry. We'll be there from about 6.30 to 9.30. And then on the way back, we'll, we'll stop at a Wendy's to get something to eat. Uh, the church does this every year. If you'd like to uh, be part of that, you can meet there at 6.30, or you can be here at the church at 5 o'clock. The shoe boxes, we'd love to thank everybody who uh, donated a shoe box. With those shoes, shoes uh, gave to help the uh, shipping. A special thanks to uh, Brother Jim Baker, you know, Jim Baker you know, for all his work. And a special uh, thanks to Dave and, and Trish Bain. They were a big, big, big part of the 311 Amen. shoe boxes just from this church. That's about 100 more than last year. And we just thank everyone who took part in this. Uh, Saturday, December the 17th, we're going to have a kids' Christmas craft day here. This is for children ages 4 to 11. It will be here at the church uh, from 10 to 12.30 p.m., uh, there's a uh, sign up sheet out in the foyer. Please sign your child up if you like to take, if you want your child to take part in that. Any further questions, you can see uh, Miss E. Rogan. The shoe boxes that uh, was done here for the children all over the world, that's a great thing. But uh, there's uh, just a few weeks ago, a bunch of the people here at this church got together and fixed a meal for homeless people. And uh, these people were forgotten at Christmas time too. Uh, Michael Neff uh, will be is trying to get together some things um, to put together 100 backpacks for homeless people. This is uh, they're trying to get donations of uh, 100 jars of peanut butter, baby wipes, uh, hats, uh, packs of oatmeal. Uh, and they're going to put together these backpacks for homeless people to give out to those people. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can see Michael Neff, and he will be taking these things. So if you want to make a donation to that or you want to help in any way, you can see Michael. He'd be glad to give you a little more information on that. And that's all the announcements I have at this time. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, we have today with us... Uh, Frances McDonald and her son Chad, we'd like to welcome you. Make sure you uh, take the time to shake your hand. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be here today. Good to see you here. We welcome you and all that's come to worship today. That's why we've entered this place. The scripture says, let's worship him in the beauty of holiness. His holiness and who we are in him. Amen. Let's stand together and let's just welcome his presence into this place. That's all that matters today. It's not just us coming, but him being here meeting with us. And he said, where we gather in his name, there he is in the midst of us. There he manifests himself. So we turn our hearts to him and invite him to do his bidding in our lives. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for this day that you have made. We rejoice and we're glad in it. We're thankful, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that's in our midst today. 
We pray, O oh God, for that anointing, that blessing, that unction, yes. Lord, that revelation, that illumination that we need, each one of us need in our hearts and lives today. Right. And as the word goes forth, as we worship together, as we praise your name, we pray that the Holy Spirit would just right. take control. Yes. And all that is done, all that is said would be glory, bring glory and honor and praise Hallelujah. and adoration to yes. the God of our salvation. Yes. We bless you. We honor you. We praise you. We welcome you. We pray, Father, that this service would be yours for your glory. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. As our worship team leads us in worship today, let's lift our hearts and voices to him in praise. Amen. this week, it shouldn't be just one day a year that we give thanks. It should be every minute of the day. Amen. Amen. Glory. Praise the Lord. That was just beautiful this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we go back and sing that chorus one more time? I just did all this morning. It was just beautiful. Guys, let's back it off a little bit. I want to hear them really sing. Can we do that? Glory. Let's praise him. Amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart.
happened with something in your life. Maybe you fell down. Maybe you're suffering with something in pain or discouragement today or depression or whatever the thing. It's just keeping you from the right relationship with God. Just remember this morning, He's your all in all. He's your all in all. Say that with me this morning. He's my all in all.
places where you didn't know where to go. I'm there. I want to go to heaven. Glory. There's an old song that says, leave it there. My daddy's favorite song. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. You will trust him and no doubt he will surely bring you out. How many is there? Oh, take your here this morning, we need to check your spirit. If our ushers would come forward at this time, we'll continue worshiping with our morning tithes and offerings. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.
Well, praise the Lord. I feel God in this place today. We're going to stay sensitive and mindful to Him. Leave your burden. He's the burden bearer. He's the burden bearer. Leave your burden with the Lord. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Go on about your business with that in mind. I've given it to Him. I've laid it before Him. I've let Him have it. Amen. Cast your cares upon him. The scripture says, because all your cares, he cares for you. We want to welcome everybody here today. Uh, it's all we've already mentioned. Uh, uh, I forgot her name already. Uh, Francis. Francis McDonald, her son Chad. Good to have this young man on the back, back here. How many recognize this other guitarist here? He's been here. We've seen him a time or two. Good to have Brother Randy and Berg Holzer and his wife Sheila and daughter Anna. We're grateful. Home from New York. They came down here to get away from that snow. I know what it is. We're glad to have them with us. We're going to take some extra, a little extra time here today for a special, very special reason. Uh, occasionally, we have this time of in a service when we acknowledge those who have a desire to express publicly their love and appreciation for this church. Uh, I, I was thinking about this week, some of you that's been here for years, I don't know how long, over 20, some of you over 25 years, and that's an amazing thing to me, And but uh, you are like pillars of this church. You, you play such an important role in the ongoing success of a church. It's always strengthening when people will acknowledge their desire uh, on a day like this to uh, commit themselves to a church. We don't do membership drives. We used to, I guess, years ago. And, and we just kind of got away from that. And, of course, we're encouraged by our conference to emphasize membership uh, at least once a year but uh, several years ago we just kind of personally we just kind of uh, got away from that and when someone would come to us and ask could I become a member of the, your church well that that's a thrill to a pastor but he realizes that's just strengthening the church and so we open the doors as they say we make it op give opportunity for those who would be interested in publicly expressing their love for the church. Now, I, I've had people come and say, Pastor, am I a member? I thought I was a member. I've been here a while. And I know there's a, uh, if you've been here a while, you feel a part of this church, and rightly so. Amen. This doesn't change anything as far as your standing or your, your our love for you and our appreciation for you. What this does is publicly... And officially, if you will, we could use that word. That's not, that's not a very spiritual word, is it? Officially. <laughs> but we give opportunity to those who would say, you know what? I want everybody to know. I want, I, I want to express myself before this body that we love this church. And we want, to, want everybody to know that this is where our allegiance is. Now, we're not churchy in the sense that we believe this is the only church. Thank God for fellowship. I, I love fellowship with other churches. We don't do it much, as much as we used to. Uh, but it's a good thing when uh, you can fellowship with those of like faith and worship together. We're, we're not just inclusive. Uh, we we want to be exclusive. We want to be a part of the body of Christ wherever it is. Uh, but when people come uh, and express this before the body, they're saying, this is my church. I love this church. We've said many times before, the only requirement that we have, the only requirement of becoming a member of this church, and one of it is, you don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to know everything about God and uh, about the things of God. You don't have to know everything about the church. 
You just need to be saved. And I've explained that before. It would be uh, counterproductive if you welcome. Now, everybody's welcome. The, the door is open to whosoever will. Anybody can come into this church. It's not a club. It's a spiritual hospital. It's a place where people have the opportunity to come and be helped if they need help, to come and minister if they've got ministry, to come and be a blessing. That's what the church is about. It's not just about what the church can do for us, but it's about what we can do for the church. But when you come and say, I love this church, and I, I am saved, I do love the Lord, I, I, I am born again, and I, I, I do, I'm, I'm walking in that way, and I, I love this church, I love what this church does, I love the ministry, and I want to uh, publicly express my support for that. That's what this day is about. Now, I probably let it leave out some stuff, but uh, basically that's what it's about. So we have a few that are interested. We had a couple more, but they weren't able to be here this morning. But those that are uniting with this church, and when you unite with this local church, we are a part of an organization, a movement called the International Pentecostal Holiness Church. We have over 2,200 churches in America and over 10,000 world in other places around the world. It's one of the fastest growing Pentecostal charismatic movements in the country. It's not the largest by any stretch. There's several that are larger, much larger, uh, but uh, we are one. We have a place. We have a role. God has raised this church up, this denomination, as well as this church. Brother Allen's dad was uh, the founder of this church back in 1957. God uh, gave 36 souls in that tent revival that wanted to start a church. That's why this church is here. Somebody had a vision, and there, there was a purpose and a plan uh, that God instilled within hearts. That's what the church is about. That's what the local church is about. And when people, when people commit themselves to it, it just strengthens it. So, that being said, I'd like for those who are uniting with the church, with this local church and with this uh, movement to come and sit on the front seat. I don't know how much more I can say uh, about uh, church membership, but as you come, let me just say about these. You can come now. <laughs> so glad Stephanie could be here today for this time. He, he said you can sit. But I, these have been here for a while, just like many of uh, others of you have become an integral part of this church and a blessing. And, and as I said a while ago, they, I believe these people are not here just for what the church can do for them, but what they can do for this church. And you know these people and what a testimony they have of God's saving grace in their lives. We've heard it and... We've seen the, the results of it. We've seen God. We can see God in their lives. and We feel their love. They've expressed their love. And we sense that. And it's refreshing. It's encouraging. It's strengthening uh, for the leadership of this church. But for this church as a whole, I, I can't put in words uh, how strengthening this is. When these come, we we welcome these. Amen. We welcome these with open arms. And thank God for you. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your testimony. Thank God for your ministry, your fellowship, your testimony. We just praise God for what He's done and what He's doing in your life and what He's going to do through you, continue to do in you and through you in the days and the weeks and the months to come. Our church today is taking a giant step. Every time this happens, and by the way, this is, this is we're making history today. This is the first time we've done this twice in one year. Just back in, I can't remember, uh, it was back about the middle of the year, somewhere June, July, I can't remember, seven people uh, joined the church, and uh, we're doing it again. That, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. We praise God for it. I'd like for 
you to stand, everybody to stand, you join them as they stand together, we're going to have prayer, you standing, you're acknowledging your appreciation, your love, and your, your acknowledgement of these and their heart's desire, we just want to praise God for them and pray for them, amen, amen. just stretch your hand out this way if you would, Father in the name of Jesus, we, we praise you Lord, we're thankful for this church. We're thankful for the many years. Next year will be 60 years. We'll celebrate 60 years of ministry here in this place. Lord, we're thankful, God, for the many, many people over the years that's come this way and been a part of the ministry. Many have come and left. Many have been blessed by this church and moved on. But, Lord, we're thankful for those that you've brought here. God, in your providence, you've made them a part of this body, of this ministry. Lord, you've used them over the years. Some of them's gone on to be with you. Some of them, Lord, have moved on. But, Lord, there are many today that have come and been here for many years. And today we acknowledge these that are expressing their love for this church and this people and their commitment to the ministry of this church and the ongoing work of God that will transpire in the days come, the best years, the best days, the best Times are yet ahead for this church. Lord, of Jesus tarries, there's great, great days ahead for what God is going to do in and through this body for the glory of God here and around the world. We praise you for these. We're thankful, Lord, for these that have come, for Francis, for Wanda, for the Roby family. Lord, others that will join their hearts to this church, their, their, make their commitment to it. We just pray your blessings on them. We pray for your anointing. We pray, Father, for... Lord, that confirmation of your Holy Spirit, your approval, if you will, God, of uh, our commitment today, Lord, that you just bless them with an anointing, God, that all that they are, all that they do, Lord, would just be multiplied in the name of Jesus, for the glory of God, for the sake of the ministry, for the purpose that you had when you, Lord, gave birth to this church. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. We thank you for each one. We pray your manifold blessings upon them. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 We invite you, if you're part of the membership of this church, to just come off of the right hand of fellowship. That these people are welcome. Bless you, brother. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you, sister. Appreciate you. Praise God. How wonderful it is for people to dwell together in you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. I'm joined heir with Jesus as we travel this song. For a part of the family, the family of God, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the family, I'm cleansed by His blood, joined heirs with Jesus as we travel.
It's a wonderful thing to identify with the visible church. By virtue of new birth, we're all, we're all a part of the invisible church. But it's good. It's good to identify. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We didn't mention it a while ago, but it's so good to see Julie and Charles here today. It's been a long time since Julie has been back. Been through a lot. But she's still, can I, can I say kicking? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sister Kenda is coming to lead us in a worship, and then we'll give you the worship. beautiful ceremony here, and, and what, a, what a spirit of the Lord that's just ministering this morning. This is a, an old song, and I pray that it has blessed someone's heart this morning. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise and to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I song can get in your spirit and it's, it stays there. That's not to say that a nugget of a sermon can be a blessing to us as well. I hope so. But uh, a song, I was just thinking a while ago as we were we were worshiping the, the words of those songs. They were, they were just so fitting, so powerful, so applicable in our lives and if we just receive them into our spirit. I tell you, it changes you. It it, it, it puts your heart on alert and on on course to the way that God would have you to go. And that song can just be a blessing over over time. I, I'm so glad for uh, this time of worship and our worship team that makes it so easy for us to worship. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn with me to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. I, uh, I heard of a church or two recently, but well, it's been a while. They have three services every day, every Sunday, three services. And this was kind of unusual. The third service was at 1 o'clock. Mm. And that would have the restaurants cleared out by, by the time you got there, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. if, if we had the service at 1 o'clock. 
I don't see anybody nodding their head or saying, yeah, that would be a great idea. <laughs> We're not going to be to one, but I want, I want to take some time to give you a word today. So uh, uh, it'll take just a few minutes this morning and you'll be gone, it'll be over, but I pray that the Lord will speak it into our hearts. Exodus chapter 3, begin with verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Now, I know that's a very familiar story to most of us today. But here's what I want you to know, verse 3. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. Verse 4. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then God said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Lord God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Then turn over to the third chapter of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Beginning in verse 7. I'm not gonna, we're not going to preach on all of this here, but this kind of leads up to the point that I want to make. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious. Talk about the Ten Commandments. So that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Now that's a message in itself right there. And that's incorporated in what we want to say today. Let's read on. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, <coughs> the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. Talk about the presence of the Lord. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Like Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day... When Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Or another translation says, freedom of access. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. Notice that. That's a, that's a powerful statement in the word. We are being transformed in the same image from glory to glory, from blessing to blessing, from encounter to encounter, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Father, thank you for your word. Bless your word to our hearts today. And help us to glean God from these truths today and be here different than we came. We ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. There's an old song that I know some of you are old enough to remember. You may have heard it since. You, if you're not of the 50s uh, generation. And I know there's a, several of you that are not. But it, it had one word in it. it there, there's a word in that song that, that is the focus of our thoughts today that we'd like to share with you in the next few minutes. It's the word turn. 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 You remember that old song that said, said, turn, 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 there is a season, turn, turn, turn. How many of you, I, I didn't ask you if you remember that song, but how many have heard it? 
If you remember it, you're getting old. There is a season, turn, 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 a, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to laugh, a time to weep, etc., etc., etc. Now, if you know your Bible, you know, I don't know if you know where it is, but you know that sounds familiar. That's from the Bible. Now, I don't know that this was a Christian song per se. I'm sure it's been probably sung in church. I, I've never heard it sung in church. I, I've heard songs like Bridge Over Troubled Water sung in church, and that's about, that's about dope. But people, people made, it, made Jesus the bridge over troubled water, and that's fine. He is. So maybe this song could be sung as well in church because of its meaning. Well, what's interesting about this song, those, that, that word turn is the only lyrics except for the very end of the song where he makes a statement like, uh, it's not too late, I promise it's not too late, I think, mean, something like that. But these are the only lyrics that he contributed. The rest of them comes from the Word, comes from the Bible. Amen. All he added was turn, and that thing became number one song. Hmm. You just think of the money he made. That was one of the easiest songs ever written, I believe. <laughs> you think of the money. He probably made enough money to quit writing songs. <laughs> but what does it mean? What is the message of that song? It probably has something to do with world peace, like a lot of the songs from that era did. But it speaks of a time and a place for all things. And the importance of taking advantage of every opportunity of life. When opportunity comes, turn. Whatever, whatever direction you need to turn. I'm talking about now when we, I know in the secular, in the natural sense, those times are important. But as Christians, we always want to make sure it's God's will. That God is leading that way. Amen. That, I mean, that's. That's, that's the main thought here today, so I'm not, uh, I'm not going secular on you here, but we, we, we want to keep God in the equation in everything that we do. But it's important to take, uh, take advantage of opportunities in life, to turn. The Bible defines that word turn as to change our position or our direction or to at least ponder that. To change a position or direction or to at least ponder that direction, that position. There's a similar word found in the Bible. It, it's a powerful word. It's a significant word. It's found from Genesis to Revelation. It's the word repent. That's not a dirty word. That's not a bad word. Repent. In fact, if you know your Bible, you know that that word is not just Related to unbelievers, it's also used in relation to believers. And it means to reconsider, to think differently, to regret, to turn, to turn, actually to turn around. Jesus incorporates that word in one of, one of his most famous sayings when the Bible says he came preaching the kingdom of God and his message was, Repent. Reconsider. Re think differently. Turn around. For the kingdom of God is near you. The opportunity of a lifetime has come to you. All you've got to do is turn. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 in Peter's great uh, Pentecost day, message on the day of Pentecost. His message was repent and be converted. He says over in one of his epistles in chapter 3 of the second epistle, it's not God's will that any perish, but that all come to repentance. That all reconsider. That all think differently. That all turn and be saved. That's God's will. Today I want to talk to you for a few minutes on what happens when people turn. What happens when people turn, specifically when they turn to God? Now this man, Moses, we, we're all familiar with this guy, and we know what transpired in his life, how he grew up in Egypt but forsook 
that uh, place and ended up running for his life. He's on the backside of the desert, the Bible says. He's tending sh the sheep of his father-in-law. Now, my question was, is this morning, what was his spiritual condition at that time in his life? Where was he in relation to his connection with God? There on the back of the desert, there chasing sheep, leading sheep around the pasture. Where did Moses, where did he stand with God at that time? We really don't know. We, we, really, don't, we really don't have any record of his spirituality, if you will. We, we read in Hebrews chapter 11, all of these wonderful statements about his faith, and they are wonderful, and they are powerful. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child. By faith, when he be became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction, suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. It goes on and on and on talking about his esteeming uh, the cause of Christ and forsaking Egypt by faith. Did that take place before he was in the desert or it, was it after he was in the desert? Or was it during? We don't know. But we know that he was living uh, by, by some many, many uh, uh, application, he was living among idol worshippers. Now some kind of water it down a little bit, kind of minimize it and say that Jethro, as a priest of Midian, his religion, it was not Christianity, it wasn't Je uh, the worship of Jehovah God, although he did get saved later, he did change and he became a blessing to Moses. But his, his religion was somewhere across between Islam and Judaism and Christianity. And he was a priest of that. Many say that they were idol worshippers. Moses was living right in the midst of all of that. In fact, he got married to one of them. Now that changes a lot, doesn't it? Hello. That can change a lot in your life. So here he was in the desert tending the sheep and God appears to him. God makes himself real to him. Now the key verse in that passage that we read is in verse 3, where it says that Moses said to himself, I will turn. There's the word. I will turn and see why this bush is not burning up. Now I'm glad he wasn't too busy. I've read elsewhere that that was not a necessarily a phenomenon for a bush to be on fire in the desert. But what made it unusual, he kept glancing at it. Hey, that thing's not burning up. I think I'll turn and see why. Now, here's the key. And I love this. That was the key. I love the next part. This, this is one of the most powerful statements you'll find in the Word of God. It says, when God saw that he turned. Are you hearing me? When God saw that he turned, he spoke to it. Now, the question is, what would have been the outcome if he said, I ain't got time, I'll check that out later? Well, what, if, what would have been the outcome if he said, I'm too busy here, I've got too much responsibility here, I've got a, I've got a plan, I've got a goal, I've got dreams, I've got aspirations of life, I, I'm headed in the direction that I want to go. God is calling, God is speaking, but he says, I, I, I like this way that I'm going. I, I'm not concerned about that. What would have happened? We don't even, the Bible doesn't even consider that. But we know as a result of his turning, his life was never the same. His life was dramatically rearranged and changed and redirected. In fact, the whole nation of Israel was never the same after his encounter with God when he turned. Now here's the point. Even in our confusion, even in times of doubt, even in times of fear, God's there. 
He's there, and if we'll turn, he'll show himself strong in our life. I thought of that passage this morning in Matthew 11 where Jesus says, Come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. When we turn in our lives, when we're willing to turn, we're turning as God, we're turning toward God and we're willing to go with him. And wherever he turns, we go. Are you with me? Now there's another similar but yet different situation found in Revelation chapter 1. It has to do with John the Revelator. John is on the Isle of Patmos. He's been exiled to a penal colony because of his preaching of the word, his testimony for Christ. And he, he gives us an account there that he was on, in the spirit on the Lord's day and he heard a voice behind him. It sounded like thunder. He heard a voice. Now here's the key word. It says in verse 12, I turned to see the voice. I turned to see the voice that spoke to me. Verse, uh, and, and, and having turned, I saw verse 17. He says, I saw him. I heard the voice say, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the first and the last. I've got a work for you to do, John. I've got something for you to do. I need you to write down something that I want you to take to the seven churches of Asia. What if he would have not turned? But the Bible says he turned and he saw the one that was spoken, speaking to him. I, I believe that's significant. He experienced, he encountered the one that was speaking to him. The point being, even in our greatest trial, even in times of uncertainty, even when we don't know about tomorrow, God is there. And if we'll turn, he will honor that turn. Yeah. Paul says in the text that we read from his letter to the Corinthians, when one turns to the Lord, when one turns to the Lord, the veil, that which shrouds the truth of God's word. In this passage, Paul says that the Old Testament, someone said one time that the the new is concealed in the old and the old is revealed in the new. We need them both. He said when even today when the Jews read the Old Testament, they, they don't see it. They still don't see it because the veil is there. The veil that, that hides the hidden mysteries of God that Paul says have been revealed by the Spirit of God to those of them that have been born of the Spirit. So they who turn to the Lord, that's the key word, they that turn to God, the veil is removed so that they can see, they experience, they, they encounter God. And where that spirit is, there is freedom of access into the manifold blessings, the mysteries of God. And I want you to note this. I called your attention to it earlier, but I want you to note it again in verse 18. There's a transformation that takes place. But it's not a one-time transformation. All we need is to be saved to get to heaven. All we need is to be born of the Spirit to get to heaven. But God, the Bible says, Paul says in one place that God has begun something in us that he will perform until that day we stand in his presence. There's a need to be sensitive to the Lord in our lives on a daily basis as believers because the transforming power and process of the Spirit of God is always desiring to work in our lives. And he tells us right here in this passage, we're transformed, we're changed from glory to glory, from experience to experience, from encounter to encounter, until one day we're going to stand in his presence like him. It's not what we do, it's what we allow the Spirit of God to do in our lives. I'm telling you, here's what I'm telling you today, trying to tell you. The Christian life is filled with opportunities that I use this word to update. One of the things that aggravates me with an iPhone. I'm a flip phone man, but they talk me into an iPhone. 
It's all the time coming up on their update. Up, update. Push this to update. And I'll push it later. You know. <laughs> Not now. Whatever it says. And we move on. Knowing full well that I that my phone needs those, but I don't want to I don't want to be interrupted right then. Are you hearing me? I don't want to be interrupted, so we just we just put it off. I'm telling you that just like our personal computers and just like our iPhones, to avoid being out of date and become slow, we need upgrades, we need updates in our lives. How important is it that believers are willing to turn, to change, to, to uh, ponder the things of God? How important is it that we are willing to say yes to the Spirit of God? How important is it when the Spirit of God begins to woo us and draw us and convict us? How important is it that we say yes to the Lord at that time and not just ignore Him? Isn't that what Paul said when he said, don't quench the Spirit of God? In these last days, when you need the upgrade and update, if you will, of the Spirit of God, you need Him constantly ministering in our lives, how important it is that we say yes to Him. Sometimes it's inconvenient. Sometimes we've got other things in mind. Sometimes we want to go, well, I like this way, Lord. I, I like This is the direction you put us in the last time. Well, if that's the last time you heard from the Lord, a preacher said from this pulpit one time, he said, if, if you don't know what to do, do what God told you the last time he spoke to you. That's the way to live. But he, if he upgrades, if he updates, listen. Listen to what he's saying by the Spirit. He's speaking to our heart. Sometimes we're unwilling. Sometimes we're... we're Let's just face it, we're just a little lazy. We like, we like it. We've been doing pretty good for a while. We're getting along pretty good in this walk with God. Why do I need an upgrade? Why do I need to listen? I don't know. I'm not sure I agree with that. Is that really God? We get a little lazy. We get a little bit of uh, sentimental. We, we may get uh, content. Kind of like those two guys on Hee Haw. I'm, I'm calling up another old show. The old uh, Junior Samples and Grandpa Jones legs stretched out on the floor. And one of them says, look yonder. Look what so-and-so's doing down yonder. And the other one says, I wish I was looking that way. <laughs> in all seriousness, that's kind of kind of way it is sometimes in our Christian life. You hear what I'm saying? You know, the point is, We'll take turns in our lives. We'll make turns. We'll make adjustments. Part of life. Yeah. I said it's part of life. We make those decisions to go this way or that way or make this, take this slight left or slight, slight right. The Bible gives us a number of examples of the negative results of laziness, if you will, or being over, overly contented or, or to be, uh, you know, unwilling to respond to the beck and call of the Spirit. The Bible talks about believers' hearts turning back to Egypt, back to where the, 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 the bondage of sin, turning from righteousness. The Bible speaks of all of these, turning from truth to lies and fables. Jeremiah really speaks of the insincerity of many who, whom he said they, they've turned their backs. God said they've turned their backs toward me, but not their faces. They're going away from me, but they're looking back. That speaks of insincerity. That's, that's trying to, to uh, do religion by themselves. Peter uses the ugly analogy of a dog returning to his vomit. In chapter 17 of Luke's Gospel, Jesus is talking about the things that will transpire in the last days and how things will unfold in the last days. And he tells his hearers, his listeners, don't forget Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. She was going away, but she turned back. You know that story. So there is, there is some danger there. There is some danger. 
Turning is a major part of our lives. That's why the, the God says in the book of Proverbs in chapter 1, turn at my reproof. Turn at my conviction. When I draw you, I'm, I'm in the major concourses of society. I'm everywhere. And I can speak to you at a moment's notice. I can speak to you anywhere you go. And when I do, turn. And I will pour out my spirit upon you. And I will show you, I will make my words known unto you. I'm preaching to you this morning that when people turn, God makes himself real. Are you hearing me today? He's watching. He's watching to see if we'll turn. Are you hearing me? Mark that down. He's watching to see if we'll turn. We're entering probably the favorite Christmas, favorite season of all, the Christmas season. And there's a lot of people that will once again turn, though ever so slightly, away from the darkness of this world to the light that Christmas represents. We're sometimes crit critical of these people. Now listen to me. This is kind of a sad, two sermons in one. But here's the challenge of the church today. We're sometimes critical of people at Christmas time that don't claim to know the Lord, don't live for God, don't serve him, but yet at Christmas time, they acknowledge the Savior to some degree or the other. Yeah. Maybe not much, but there, there's a pause. Most people today know why there's a Christmas. You'll be hard-pressed to find somebody that does not know the reason for the season. But we, we, sometimes, we, we sometimes get critical of them because... You know, let's face it, tragically, many of them will, at the end of the year, the start of the new year, they'll turn back to the darkness of this world. They've been through a Christmas season, but well, they'll go back to the darkness of the world. So, consequently, it's hard sometimes to recognize this turning. Oh, we just chalk it up to, it's the season, and everybody is enjoying the season. Let me hear me now. Hear me now. I don't have much more to say. You hear what I'm saying today. You can't see the heart of an individual. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, if they turn, and listen, some of those people are full of confusion. Some of them are living in doubt and fear, even unbelief. Some of them are struggling, suffering in uncertainty, and mental anguish, physical suffering. And they're entering a season and trying to some draw some semblance of some semblance of joy, some some reprieve, some kind of strength from this time of year. They're there, they're all around us. They're everywhere we look. And the Christmas season is a window, an open window of opportunity for the church. Are you still with me? It's an opportunity for the church. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? If he disguised himself and come among us, what would he do? I was reading last week in my devotional where he had responded to an invitation. I'm not saying you have to do this this Christmas. I'm just talking about Jesus recognized a heart that was turning ever so slightly. He didn't agree with how they lived. He didn't identify with them. But they invited him to eat and he went. And he was known as a friend of sinners. He didn't go around saying, hey, I'm a friend of sinners. That's what they called him because he spent time with them. Not only that, but he went to eat with the religious people. Some of the People that hated him the most, or they represented the, the most hateful people of that day. But ever so slightly, their hearts was turning. There was a turning. He recognized it. And that's what you and I, that's what the church needs to do today. We need to recognize those hearts that are 
ever so slightly during this season when they stop and pause to think this is the birthday of Jesus. I don't know him, but I know that's what's going on. Yeah. And that heart turns a little bit. I had a dream last week. It's the shortest dream I've ever had, or at least a lot of dreams I have, I can't remember half of the stuff that was in them. But all of a sudden in this dream, this is where it seemed to pick up. All of a sudden I was standing before this young couple. And they looked like they were Hispanic or biracial. I don't, I don't know which, doesn't matter. And this young woman looked at me, and I don't know what I'd said. I don't know if I'd been trying to witness to them or what was going on. But she looked at me, and she asked this question. Are you trying to church me? What in the world does she mean? Did she mean? I immediately, I woke up. I didn't even have a chance to respond. Immediately I, I was awake and I thought, what kind of question is that? Are you trying to church me? And the only thing I could gain out of it, that is she, is she, if what, is what I'm saying, is what I'm doing, is it about a, a church? Is it, a, is it just about my church? And, I, and I, I pondered over that for days, and and the only conclusion that I could come to was would be the fact that we don't represent a church. We don't represent a church. We are the church. We are the church. And the church's responsibility is to represent Christ. Was I failing to represent Christ? What would Jesus do? Was I just representing my religion to her? Whatever I did. Was I just representing my doctrinal statement? Well, what was it that caused her to ask me that question? We're here to represent Christ. Christmas is all about Him. Keep Him at the forefront. Keep him again in the very center of it. And when the opportunities arrive for us, when people turn, and listen to me, people will turn. People will turn. And God is waiting to speak to them. God is waiting to have an encounter with them. What is our role as the church in this Christmas season? It's to be watching to see for people to turn. Does this make sense? It's being on our guard and being ready to be used by God. It doesn't matter what they look like, what they talk like. You know, sometimes we pick and choose. Sometimes people intimidate us and I, I have to admit, we're all intimidated by certain people. And I'm not saying, you know, clench your teeth and wait in there. You want to make sure you're, the Lord is leading you. But here's the key. Watch for that turn. You can hear it. You can see it. And the opportunity arises. The opportunity opens. For us to address that. God, I'm telling you, God is waiting to speak to them. What would Jesus do? What did he do for us? Somebody in the past, in our lostness, somebody watched in our lives for that turn. And God, we turned and God spoke. He spoke a word in our and the Holy Spirit took it. Right. Listen, God has called us to be change agents in this world, not only at Christmas time, but to be ready. We're to turn when the Holy Spirit speaks to us. 
And that's one of those places that he may call on us to turn. Because we see someone else turn. Does that make sense? We may have to turn in order to put ourselves in a position. Put ourselves in a, the right place to be used of God in that person's life. Be willing to turn. Because that's when God will speak to you and through you. Watch for that individual that seems so far removed from Christmas and the message of Christmas, but yet at a moment you recognize a heart that's turning ever so, ever so small. God use you there. Amen? Stand. Kind of two messages in one. Brother Allen, do we know that chorus? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. <laughs> Two messages in one, but hear me. We're closing. How many today would say, I, I, I want to be sensitive to the Spirit of God? Maybe you already are. I hope you are. And I'm not asking you if you're saved. I'm not asking you if you've had a certain experience with the Lord. But I'm asking you, are you open to that? Are you open to that ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life? Are you open? Are you walking in a life of surrender and submission, of sensitivity and mindfulness and awareness? Do you want to be on the same page with the Holy Spirit and what He's doing in these last days? Are you, are you mindful of your, are you conscious? Of, does the reality of God's Word speak volumes into your heart for these last days? Are you open to that? Do you want to be? I want to be, don't you? I want to be. If that's your desire, I want you to come and stand, sit, or kneel, whatever you're comfortable. But I want you to come saying, Lord, I, I want to, when you say turn, I want to turn. I want to be yoked with you. I know you, I love you, I, I serve you, I live for you, I'm born of the Spirit. I want to be yoked with you in everything, every part of my life, everywhere I go, every decision I make, every aspect of my life. I want to be yoked with you so that when you speak, when you make yourself real, I want to be in a place that I, yes, Lord, and I turn. Amen? Is that you? Well, wave at me or not or something. Amen? Glory. That's me, preacher. That's what I want in my life. Praise the Lord. I want to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. And secondly, I want to recognize the hearts of lost people. When they turn, when they open the door an inch, I'm going, I want to be there. I want to be walking so close to the Lord, so mindful of the Holy Spirit, realizing God wants to save that person. God wants to transform their life just like he did mine. And I want to be used of him doing that. Amen. As we sing this little chorus, let this be your prayer. Let this be your intention today. Amen. Come on, tell him today. Amen, amen. Good 
turn your eyes to Him in any circumstance, in any situation, good times and bad times, you can turn your eyes toward Him. And you'll encounter Him. I promise you on the authority of His Word, you'll encounter Him. He'll give you direction. He'll give you wisdom. He'll bless you. Let's sing it again. Let's determine in our hearts today. I'm not going to leave here today without confirmation, that confirmation in my heart. That's where I stand with Him. That's how I want to live. That's how I want to walk. Amen. Amen. Glory. 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 Yes. thank you for this powerful word from the word. We're so thankful for the challenge of the Holy Spirit. We're thankful, Father, regardless of our circumstances, our situation, regardless of where we find ourselves, you never leave us nor forsake us. You always make a way, even where there seems to be no way. Thank you for the work of the Spirit in our hearts, in our lives. Help us to become more and more sensitive, mindful and conscious and aware of the Holy Ghost. Purposing in our minds never to quench you, never to quench that conviction, that direction that you put in our hearts. Never grieving the Spirit by whom we are sealed until the day of redemption always living, walking, listening, always conscious and aware of your ever presence in our lives. Hallelujah. 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 Always living, surrendered, always living, submitted to the will of God. Your purpose, your plan, and being willing, Lord, being yoked with you to turn when you turn, to turn and experience what you have for us. Show us again and again from your word, Lord. Bathe our hearts, O oh God, in the truths, these truths that are promises that are yes and amen in Christ promises that cannot fail, that will not fail. No matter where we find ourselves, even in the desert places, even in places of suffering, you never change. You're always the same. Hallelujah. You'll always lead. Won't you just give him a praise right there where you are? Just give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am his and he is mine. And his banner over me is love. Glory. Yes, Jesus loves me. This I know. Yes, Jesus knows me. This I love. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God, praise God. Sing it, brother. Oh, to Yes. Oh,
my course to pray with you about everything we've talked about today, your spiritual well-being. Everybody saved, everybody know the Lord. If you don't, today is the day of salvation. Now is the time to receive Christ into your heart and your life. Say yes to Jesus. Amen. Aren't you glad for the day you said yes? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Make it real, Father.